G'day everyone, it's Alan here from Fishing Mad and thanks for tuning in to another episode. Well, winter is upon us. That water temperature has plummeted and so has the outside temperature, but it's not the time to put the rods away because you can still have some really productive fishing. So what we're really gonna be doing now is focusing our energies on staying local and really targeting a lot of those bread and butter species that you can catch in really big volumes during these colder winter months. So today we have ventured out just to Werribee, got the boat, we've headed straight out to about six meters deep. And we know in this area, on a good day, you can catch them in really big numbers. So we're gonna be flicking some soft plastics. We're also gonna be drowning some baits. And throughout, myself and my good mate Mark, we're gonna run you through some tips and techniques to help you catch some fish in the colder yet very productive months. So sit back and enjoy the show. I told you my rod went bang, and then a second later yours did. Half decent floody, you're thinking? A little bit of weight. Yeah. Uh, if you need the line or the net, you get it up. That's good. Oh, you're double. Oh, double. You're oh. double trouble. Oh. Third double on the Paternoster rig and a third that chased it up. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Have a listen to that, hey? This one's definitely got a little bit more weight to it. Oh, it's a nice fish. I think I know that. Yeah, it's a nice one. Uh, that one. That's one of the better ones today. Another one on the soft plastic. Let's come around this way. Tiny. Yeah, but we can't keep a bait or a plastic in the water at the moment. I don't have a rod in. A lot of small ones, but they're ravenous. Mark's just got the really light in feet rod there and the Sol 3, 2000 size, and that's a legal size flatty. It's not a big one. For us, that will definitely go back. That. That's two in a row in literally about 20 seconds. That's a better size one. So that coming up now. Now all we're using guys is on the soft plastics front, we're just using these gold four inch turtleback worms. We're using four inch paddle tails. That's one of the Kite Tech Easy Shiners. We're even using some really small stuff like your two and a half inch Z-Man grubs. We've also got a couple of Paternoster rigs out. And all we're using is the Humble Pilchard. And these are just some squid tentacles, which I caught yesterday. And I tell you what, between those very simple things, you should expect flathead and in good volumes. Okay, so the setup that we have today, we are both using two rods. So one rod we're gonna be working in our hands. So that one, we're gonna have a soft plastic on. Now the setup that we've got for those is we are just using a one sixth or a one eighth of an ounce jig head. The jig head size is either a 2.0 or a 3.0. And as I said, we're just flicking some of those four inch turtleback worms in the camo and sandworm color and also just some four inch paddle tails. The second rod that we've got, we just leave sitting there in the rod holder and we've got with those just a Paternoster rig, one that you can either make up yourself or some of the pre-made ones. And then in terms of bait, all we're using is a small chunk of pilchard or a small bit of squid tentacle, which is some squid that I caught yesterday. And what you're gonna find is you're just gonna be bouncing between the rods. So the rod here with the soft plastic, we're just gonna be working really, really slowly. Just subtle little lifts off the bottom. You're gonna pick up quite a few flathead doing that. And in between that, that rod that's sitting in the rod holder, you're gonna find every few minutes, that's just gonna buckle over. We're finding, as I said, right on cue. Now, one thing around this, I guess this side where we're fishing in Werribee, you get a lot of flathead. Oh, this one actually feels good, Mark. You get a lot of flathead, um, you know, between that sort of 30 and 40 centimeter size and a lot between that six and eight meters deep. So this one feels like a decent fish. So we're gonna, it's actually a good one. Yeah, it's a good one. 
nice one. Nice fish though. Oh yeah, that's easily the best one. There you go. And right on cue, that's exactly what we're talking about. So we'll see if we can calm this fish down. Okay. And that's, oh, oh, the plastic is on. Okay, so it's a bit mayhem here. The rods are going left, right, center. So Mark's rods are going on. And as you can see there, there is a beautiful flathead just there. So that is a perfect eating size. Mark is onto a good one. So we're just gonna quickly get this one off. We'll grab the camera. So I'm gonna put this flathead down. Another one. Oh yeah. Raining flathead. Oh, that's a better flathead. That's a nice size one. Okay, so the bite has been absolutely frantic. So what I've done, I've pulled my two rods out of the water just so I can walk you through the exact gear and setup that we're using today. So as I said, we do like to use two rods. One is your drifter, that's your bait rod, and the other one is your soft plastics that you're gonna have in your hand working at all times. So my bait rod, so this is just a two to four kilo rod. It's seven foot in length, and I've just got that paired with a 2500 size reel and I've got 10 pound braid on there. 10 pounds really good because flathead have quite bristly mouths. Sometimes you'll find they'll actually scuff up your fluorocarbon leader. Now in terms of the rig, all that we are doing, and you'll see that the sinker is absolutely tiny. So all we wanna do is get our baits down to the bottom. It doesn't need to be any heavier. The top end here of Port Phillip Bay has very little tide. So if you're fishing another area that's high tidal flow, you'll need to go heavier than that. But for us, we've just got these simple Paternoster rigs. So you can see it's a very, very small hooks there, a little strip of squid, and then a little bit further down is your second hook. Okay, and that has just got a little cube of pilchard there you want to make sure you've got nice hook exposure and then all we're doing is we're casting this one out and we're just letting it sit in the rod holders you will be surprised how many flat head you will catch by doing absolutely nothing and that rod just sitting in the rod holder so we're going to do that now that's just going to that's just going to sit in there whilst i'm doing that it gives me a chance to show you about the other rod so this is my soft plastics outfit so two to five kilo outfit Again, seven foot, anything around that two to four, two to five, you can even go lighter. If you want to use your brim gear and fish with one or three or one or four, it's a lot of fun. And the top end here of Port Phillip Bay, you're going to get a lot of flat headed between sort of that 35 and 40 centimetre size. So a lot of fun when you're using the ultralight gear. So as I said, two to five kilo rod. Again, I've got a 2,500 size reel that is spool with 10 pound braid. And all that we are using is jig heads like these. So these are just TT headlocks jig heads. I've got a one slash six there, and that is a two O. So showed you some of the soft plastics before but honestly two and a half inch grubs three inch paddle tails four inch paddle tails three inch curl tails four inch curl tails and your worm imitations like your berkeley turtleback worms absolutely perfect and you want to work them really really slowly so flathead the ambush predators they like to sit on the bottom and you're going to find if you can get your baits and your plastics working on the bottom really really slowly you're going to catch plenty. We've been out here for about, I don't know, half an hour, and I can't, I already lost count of how many we've got. So there's nothing fancy, nothing complex to this setup. A lot of fun, and the old humble flatheads become pretty expensive to buy these days. So it's a really good feed. That's really nice and easy to clean as well. All right, let's get back to the fishing action. Oh, there we go. The baits at the moment. does not feel that big. That is a little one, you'll go back. On the soft plastic this time. Turtle back. Oh, that is not such a bad fish. Oh, that's another good size one as well. Look at that. So there you go, we've come across a good patch. Beautiful, well done mate. Now another quick tip to do here guys, when you start catching the flathead straight away in one spot, it's good to mark a waypoint and just save it. And what that's gonna do, that's really gonna allow you to spend your time focusing on fishing where the fish are. As we never anchor up when we're flathead fishing, we like to cover ground, we use very small sinkers that way they don't get snagged and obviously we're working the soft plastics in our hand. That allows us to come back to this spot because we know there's some good flathead there. So it's pretty frantic at the moment. So we're gonna get baits and plastics back in the water and do some casting lessons with Mark. Another one. We can't keep a bait in the water, can we? 
Really? Uh, we're catching plenty of flatties this size now, which is great. Awesome eating. Yeah. Beautiful. Let's get him on ice. Yeah, we'll be on the dinner table tonight. Oh, well, that's... Yeah. On the bait again. Feeling as big all of a sudden. Oh, oh, he's, he's, yeah, he's a bigger than leg of size. That's not so bad. Yep. Good job. Ah, you oh. went in deep, bro. Oh, shit. Oh, Yikes. That's a big gash, mate. Just apply pressure on it for a bit. Got one on the plastic. A soldier. <laughs> a soldier. <laughs> a big jellyfish there. Yeah, there's a little one, but that's okay. On the turtle back. I think I might do the swap. Look how much blood is on there, mate. <laughs> oh, my, my rod's already getting it. Oh my god. <laughs> Get a bit faint looking at all the blood, mate, is it? Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Oh, here we go. That's a good bite. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Nice. Watch your fingers, kids. Oh, yep. <laughs> Flatties are on. He's gone, is he? No, he's gonna say, you had to be on, mate. Look at that. Look at that. So wounded. Stop me. We've got doubles. <laughs> Oh, my plastic one's on too, mate. So we've got triples. Yep, I'm on as well. So, there's triples. Uh, it's a bit smaller on the plastic. Oh, uh, actually. Okay, so in terms of soft plastics, what I always like to do is I like to have a variety out with me and kind of work out what they're biting on the day. And you're gonna find there's different days, they will go for different things and different colors and different profiles. A lot of that is gonna be based on a whole range of things from water clarity, the run of the water. So don't overthink it. The best thing that you can do is take out a range of different colors, shapes, and sizes. So typically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a very natural looking one. So that is a Munro's 3.75 inch paddle tail. That's in the glass monkey color, which represents a bait fish exceptionally well. And the other thing I've got is one like that in the bright pink UV. So that is a Z-Man three inch minnow paddle tail. And what you're doing there is you're covering lots of grounds. You've got that nice bright colors that might stand out when it's really dark murky water clarity and then you've got that really nice natural presentation which is going to mimic a bait fish really well which might work really really well in those clear conditions but it's really about mixing it up find out what's working on the day have a bit of fun with it and once you work out the formula of what's biting load up and you'll catch plenty of fish we keep saying we're going to rig up our other rods and we get a we're literally getting a bite every 30 seconds now that one's not quite as big as the last couple that we got but I expect these rods to be going up in a second. As you can see, all we're doing there, guys, is we are just letting the bait rod in the rod holder, and you're gonna get quite a few catches on there with that Paternoster rig, just using a very small sink car, that way it doesn't snag up. And I'll tell you what, when Mark catches one, I just put my soft plastic rod in the holder as well, and you'll be surprised. You also catch a few fish just with the rod in the rod holder, and uh, that allows us to attend to a few fish, let the smaller ones go. And here we go, this one's just about to go off. There we go, there we go, got him. Another small. Another one. That was on the drifter, so not doing anything, just drifting along. There's another good flathead there. Well, yeah. things have gone a bit quiet in the last sort of 10 minutes, so I think we're just going to go back to one of the wave points just out. Probably what 50 meters and uh, give it another drift and see how we go. Oh, here we go. Look, Mark, Mark. Yeah. Here we go. So we've got a flathead on here, guys. 
<laughs> right on cue as a flying flathead. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, you're on too. Okay, so there you go. So there is another beautiful flathead. Now, flathead typically are pretty docile fighters, but when you're using really light gear, so today we just got the two to four kilo rods out. So that one was taken on that soft plastic. Uh, also the very light ones on the bait. And I'll tell you what, it's a lot of fun on the ultra light gear. And um, we have been on the water now for an hour. And I reckon we've caught about 40 flathead. We've just kept the ones that are gonna be good eating size. Soft plastics fishing is really booming at the moment. The most common question I get from people is, how do you work your soft plastic? Mark's onto a fish behind me there, so we'll keep talking while he brings that one in. So all I've got rigged on here, as I said a little bit earlier, that's a one sixth of an ounce jig head. I've got just a Berkeley turtleback worm on there. And all we're doing is we're casting out. Okay. And working it very, very slowly. So we want to wait for that soft plastic to hit the bottom. It'll probably take about five or six seconds and you'll know it hit the bottom because your line will actually go slack. And when the flathead fishing is really on, you'll even get bites on that first drop. What you're gonna do then is a little wind and a couple of little lifts. And what you're doing is you're kind of imitating like a wounded prawn or a wounded bait fish, or in this case, like an erratic worm off the bottom. And then you just let it sit back on the bottom again for 10 or so seconds. Now, we are not anchoring, we are constantly drifting. So what's happening by working it very slowly, it'll sort of just lift it up off the bottom and then that'll sink back down. And as we're covering ground, at some stage, you are gonna go over a flathead and they find soft plastics like that absolutely irresistible. So don't overwork it. You don't have to do any extreme fancy action. Just a couple of little lifts of the rod tip, wind up the slack and then just let it sit there for another 10 seconds. Keep it simple and you're gonna get yourself a lot of flathead doing some basic techniques like this. Just make sure that you're using the right jig heads for the area that you're fishing. So have a bit of a thought about how deep the water is, how strong the current is, and uh, whoops, whoop. All my other ones going off. I've got doubles here. You just have to stay on there. So once again, we've just gone straight back to that productive spot. Little pilcher cubes just like this. Just threading that through that's all you need that to look like really just burying that pilchard in there and exposing the hook and then another one here and just to show you about using marks on to another keeper. another keeper there you go so got a good patch here that went crazy in the rod holder yeah it doesn't want to come up I'm hoping we start to get a few more in those 40 sizes. Oh, it has to be. Yeah. It's a good one. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at this. That's a great flathead. That's a really nice flathead. The old lift. Oh yeah, good one, mate. That is a nice fish. Ooh. Okay, I've just flicked across now to that three inch paddle tail in that UV pink. In days like this where that water clarity isn't the best, these are gonna stand out really good. And I expect we'll get a few bites. Okay, so look at this one on the plastic here, guys. That is a nice fish. He's a decent one, Mark. Okay, so that nice flatty there is taken on that pink soft plastic. Now, one thing you've got to be very, very careful of with flathead is on the back of the head, they've got those very, very sharp spines there, which Mark has kindly pointed out because he's got a towel that is absolutely full of blood and uh, they're very sharp and they do sting a bit and what happens is you actually bleed quite a bit when you get stung by them so you want to handle them very carefully obviously i'm just supporting its belly with my hand got the lip grips in there so it's not in too much distress um but do handle these fish with care oh, 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 oh. there's a fish Very small. Oh, I followed him, mate. Oh, I love it when they do that. They follow it all the way up. 
for your bait rod, one of the tricks is really to make sure you're picking the right sinker. And as I said, you really want to give some thought about how deep you're fishing and how strong that current is. For me, I think the real key is getting away with the least amount of lead that you can get away with. That way, it's going to prevent you from snagging up a lot. It also means that your bait's going to move a little bit more freer when you're drifting along. So. Here in the top end, there's very, very little current. So you're gonna find is we're gonna be fishing with sinkers around that size, very, very small. If things did pick up a little bit, that's probably about the maximum that I would go to. So I want the least amount of weight that I can get my bait to the bottom. And you're gonna find that's really gonna help. It's also gonna stop the fish from feeling any resistance when they get onto the bait. So that's what we're gonna put on now. And I'm pretty sure we'll be pulling that out of the water with a flat head near the end of it pretty soon. Now, in terms of using your marine electronics when you're out going for flathead, we're not searching around, staring at the HDS live unit that we've got on the boat here, searching for flathead. That's not what we use it for, but it can come really important just by marking waypoints. And you're gonna have patches where it's quiet and then other patches where it's just crazy with non-stop catches. So once we start getting hits, bang, we mark a waypoint, we give it a name, here we go, whoops. And the idea is as you're drifting along, what you start to do is to map out a little bit of a labyrinth of where you're catching fish. So if you get to a point in the day where the bite's a little bit quiet, great, start the engine, go back and drift over to those other areas where you were catching fish. Nine times out of 10, you'll probably catch a few more because they like to congregate in the same area. And uh, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Now, the best areas to target flathead are in your sandy flat. So as I said, we are fishing from Werribee today. We've come straight out fishing in between eight meters and six meters deep. Sometimes we'll look on the sounder and you're gonna see you're not getting any of those fuzzy lines, which means that you are on straight service, which is indicating that you are on those sandy flats. And that is really, really good grounds. If you wanted to chase pinkies, what you can do is you can go in a little bit closer and you get a lot of that fuzzy line on your sounder, which will indicate that you're sitting more around those reef areas. But for here, this is perfect grounds for flathead. There is no shortage of them. Well, that's a wrap everyone. And I hope that you've enjoyed this episode on flathead fishing out with me and Mark. We've had a lot of fun recording it because it has been non-stop action. We've been out here only for a couple of hours and we have caught countless flathead, a lot of small ones, but also a lot between that sort of 35 and 40 centimeter size, which is gonna make from great eating. And has been some really, really fun out on the water. I hope that some of the tips tricks and techniques that we've run with you today will help you on your way of catching a few flathead and as always i really appreciate your company don't forget to go and check out our members area which is www.fishingmad.com.au forward slash member hope you can check that out and i look forward to seeing you in our next episode out on the water sometime soon cheers everyone